Lost, perhaps, in the crush of all that hard news was a frightening series of pictures that appeared in a recent issue of People magazine. They showed the crowd response to a London concert given by pop singer David Cassidy. It was a concert that ended tragically when 800 of David's hysterical teenage fans fainted and then had to be treated for minor injuries that resulted when they rushed the stage for a closer look at their idol. One girl, 14-year-old Bernadette Wheeler, died as a result of a heart attack she suffered in a trampling. Now, partly because of what happened in London and on the other stops of his recently completed worldwide tour, and also in recognition of the fact that at 24 years old, it's time for him to leave the Peter Pan Partridge family image behind him. David's beginning the difficult transition from teeny bopper to young adult, and he's here with us tonight to talk about that trip. Then David Cassidy, the high life and hard times of a teen idol is first. He's the only child of actor Jack Cassidy and actress Evelyn Ward. His own acting career started right out of high school with bit parts on different TV series. Stardom came for David after he joined the Partridge Family. That was a series, as I'm sure you know, about a family rock band. David was the lead singer of the group, Shirley Jones, who in real life as his stepmother was his co-star. Take a look. When the chains are out no longer ground me and my soul can sail away to a better life. That'll be the day. That'll be the day. And when the silence is broken and words unspoken can finally have their say, then we'll all sing out. That'll be the day. She keeps speeding up the tempo. I can't help it. That light is flashing faster than we're playing. It's messing me up. Lined up against all in the family, the Partridge family, after four successful seasons on TV, finally lost the ratings war and has now been dropped by ABC. What happens now to its million-dollar-a-year superstar is something that he can tell you himself when Good Night America continues. That's right after this. Good night, America. David Cassidy says that he's finished with the Peter Pan image and the bubblegum music that made him famous. Before he comes out to look ahead, let's look back at what made the crowds go crazy. His concerts are usually sold out well in advance, the audience predominantly early and sub-teenage girls who would chant their pre-adolescent love for their hero. He has an international fan club of over 200,000 members, and finding film of him performing is difficult because the music is usually drowned out by the hysterical young audience. His latest and probably last world tour was more of the same. He was a big hit in New Zealand, created pandemonium in Australia. They went crazy in Hong Kong and Japan, and they went wild in England. Too wild. Maybe the inevitable end result of the orchestrated hysteria of bubblegum music. Somebody got killed in the stampede. Give me an eye. Give me a thing. What have you got? I think that the main thing that's important for me to feel is that I did not personally act irresponsibly, nor did the security men, nor did the ambulances and anybody else involved. I think that it just was a situation. She wasn't in the front. I don't think she was injured. She was on the sides. And I think just from the excitement of it all, so I've been told, and there have been a lot of rumors about it, um, she just had, a, I think, a heart attack. Can I ask you, at the age of 24 now, you're <coughs> retiring. I'm not retiring. I'm stopping touring. I'm still going to make albums. I hopefully still will be able to, uh, to act. I'd like to do a film. I'm not retiring. I'm just not doing concerts anymore. That's part of David Cassidy's history. He can tell you himself about his future. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Cassidy. He's here.
Thank you. Look at that jacket. <laughs> Is, is this a Hawaii special? France. Oh, France. Fr yeah. France uh, version of the Hawaii special. Yeah. It's really very exciting. And I, I was wondering, you know, if the announcement that you made during that press conference that you were going into kind of semi-retirement, that you were going to stop touring. I wonder if it was a result of what happened to her, or if it was something that was uh, generated over a longer period of time, you know? Uh, you know, I got asked about mm, three months ago I guess right before I went to England on a phone I was talking to a girl who was interviewing me she said <clears throat> she said uh, what are your plans I mean you'll be back next year right and I went next year I said uh, this isn't a, 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 an annual thing for me I said you know this is um, this is the last time I'm planning to come and uh, it was like at that moment I decided uh, that that was it you know and uh, I'm glad now it's over you know I feel real good about it when, when you say it's over, I mean, you were phenomenally successful, especially on, on concerts and your worldwide tours. I mean, you played to sold-out audiences, really hysterical, loving audiences. Do you mean you're not going to do that anymore? If, they, if you keep coming back time and time again, it becomes like anticlimactic. So I figured I wanted to leave it uh, on a note that I can look back on the whole experience now and feel real good about it. And I do, you know. How do you feel about the Partridge Family series going down? I'd like to burn it. No, <laughs> I... No, I I think it's, you know, it was a good thing. Uh, I didn't see, uh, I think that it, it was uh, unfortunate that they moved the, uh, the time slot for the rest of the people. My uh, contract was up uh, this year, so I was out anyway. But it, it was a good thing, it was a good vehicle for me, but I think it went on too long, you know. Well, the, the part you played there, Keith Partridge, I guess most people felt that he was 16 or 17 years old. and. I mean, he is not you. You're David Cassidy. You're 24 years old. How, how did you feel about most people feeling you just weren't a grown-up? You know, I'm glad it's over, and I'm glad that, um, I'm, glad that I'm no longer involved. I would, I would have liked to have seen it gone on for a couple of the people in the show. I know that they wanted to continue, and it was secure. And every week, for me, I just wanted to grow, you know. It was really stifling, and a lot of them I probably couldn't have made the last three years without them. Because they, uh, they really kept me uh, from uh, banging my head against the wall occasionally. Yeah, I guess most of the fans of the show, or at least the most demonstrative of the fans, were g little girls who probably don't even stay up late enough to watch late night TV. You mean that we're on now? <laughs> uh, Pass you're... me that cigar, will you? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, Eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old little girls. Sometimes, so I... yeah. Uh, you know, that just... Uh, just freaked me out when that started happening. I, I just wasn't ready for it. I never wanted that to happen, you know. I mean, I never expected it to, to be anything like I was an actor. I worked in, in, in New York in a Broadway show, and I worked in the textile industry, and I was, I was just hustling to make, you know, as an actor, and I just did this. It was like a job, you know. And when it, <clears throat> when the series sold and when it started happening, it was all like, well, of course, no one's going to look at me and think that I really do all those things and chew gum. And I, I suddenly, when you see yourself you know, it's like confronting yourself and seeing, you know, your picture on the on the front of a, a lunchbox and, and the cover of these bubblegum cards and stuff. T-shirts. Yeah, right. T-shirts. I mean, everything. Dresses. And I, they came with, you know, and I didn't, and I'm not, I don't feel bad about it because I felt most of the merchandising was kind of um, a bit of a ripoff. But I, I didn't make any bread from that. Uh, and I'm glad of it now, you know. I mean, I, I didn't really uh, want it. You mean all the Keith Partridge T-shirts and lunchboxes? Well, were? David Cassidy, Keith Partridge, whatever, it's Partridge Family, all that stuff. And it, you know, it somehow always focused on me somehow or another. Yeah. And I, you know, the records and stuff in the beginning, you know, all through, all through it, it became, uh, so, you know, I'm doing this for a television show. It was so restricting that, I mean, a, a couple of the tunes throughout the four years, and I made hundreds and hundreds, and hundreds of songs I was recording constantly almost, you know, for them and then later for me. The reason I stopped, uh, I stopped making records is because they all were the same, you know, and it all became like the same song, same writer, same producer, same engineer, same room, same players. You can't, I mean, there was no individuality about it, and I was really stagnant, you know, and I stopped growing. Suddenly, you, you find yourself holding a cereal box and going, I can't believe I'm really doing this. It's like, you know, is this really happening? Hi, wake up like me. Wake up to, you know, whatever it was. I, I, you know. Your last concert at Madison Square Garden, though, there, there were 
20,000 just screaming, loving people, and now do you think that that's going to be gone from your life? If you, no, if no. you disappear from the TV scene... I don't know. I, that's hard to say. I, I, I must say whether... I've tasted a lot of success, and I, I've been real fortunate, and there were times that I wish everyone could experience the kind of high, the kind of energy that I... when I would walk out on stage having 20,000 people or whatever, even a 1,000 people, regardless of that, when you have that kind of energy focused on you and they're all right there. You know, kids, there was a lot of talk and, you know, how do you feel about playing audiences that are 15, 16, 17, or whatever their age, they're younger than you, you know, how do you feel about that? Don't you want to appeal to older, heavier audiences? My feeling always was that I, I felt bad that I was misrepresented so badly by the television show and various forms of media, uh, records, uh, you know, magazines and all that stuff. But I, um, I always felt like, you know, I, when I would walk out on stage and there would be those kids there and they, they had all that positive energy, when they love you, man, they tell you they love you. And when they don't like you, they tell you they don't like you. They're not like adults. Well, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to clap too loud because the next person next to me might think I'm a little out of control. <clears throat> so they sit back and... Let's talk more about that. Okay. okay. When Good Night America comes back right after this. A while ago, you posed in Rolling Stone magazine. I guess it was nude or semi-nude, mm -hmm. but it really was out of the, keeping with the image, image. of uh, the Keith Partridge thing. Yeah. Was that a, a conscious attempt to break out of uh, no. what they had drawn for you? No, it was, um, I think, more an attempt on the part of Rolling Stone to crack the image. As a matter of fact, and I, I, I thought that you know there was a lot of controversy that came down, certainly from within networks and all that, and sponsors and used sensationalism in the article which made it good i think it was they took a particular point of view and they did it well they didn't show the other side you know i mean they chose a lot of the things that would be opposite of what one would think of of me and what my touring would, and stuff would be all about but i liked the article I, I thought that it was good and a lot of people either loved it or hated it well it was very country they talked about smoking marijuana things like they that. talked about all sorts of stuff and i, I you know i when someone asks me a question, I, I don't lie to them, you know, I, I cop to it, and I cop to the fact what I was at when I was young. I mean, I got kicked out of school three times, and I went through all that, and I, you know, I mean, I was just like everybody else, and I was out in the street, and here I am. You weren't born with the white suit that uh, they gave you to play on. No, no. <laughs> you know, a lot of the, the, the so-called pros in the record uh, and music business say that your peak is past. Yeah, that, uh, they have uh, been saying that a long time. Well, what do you, how do you respond? Is, is your story going to be kind of like the monkeys when they were getting 15,000 letters a day and then yeah. two years later... Well, my story isn't, uh, I don't think, anything like the monkeys because they're a, first a group. Um, they're, by, funny enough, by the same company started that, uh, Screen Gems, uh, started the Partridge Family. The Partridge Family was a very big success on television, which the monkeys never was, ah. you know? Um, I think that now the show is over, I think a lot has to de depend upon what I do with my career and what I do with my uh, myself as a human being in the next um, year to two years. And what will that be? I and mean, what do you want to do? Well, at this point, I've got tentative plans to um, to go down. The last time I was in New York, right before I went to England, I had a, a meeting with um, David Bowie. And I think I, at this point, we talked about making an album in about a month. So I, I, maybe I'll do that. I don't want to get into a situation like I was before, where I was contractually bound, and I stopped making records for over a year, you know? I mean, at this point, I, I, I made one record in the past two years, which for someone who was constantly recording and making records is unheard of. And when you do that, you fall, people think, well, I mean, obviously he's not making hits anymore, so who cares about him, you know? But it's going to be interesting for me, and I, I think it's going to be a long, hard climb. Did I read that you lost a bunch of money, $300,000 or something? In, uh... I heard about it yesterday morning. I was in Hawaii, right, and I was surfing out on the beach, and I totally, no phone, no pool, no pets and all that. And <laughs> I, I'd just been hanging out for the last five days, recovering from the, uh, from the journey, from the tour. And I, uh, I got in yesterday into L.A., and I, um, I woke up, and they said, did you hear about it? And I said, no, what? I thought something really great had happened. And they said, <clears throat> he lost $300,000 this week, real fast night. I said, what? I said, how could I have lost $300,000, you know? I, and they explained to me that there had been all sorts of press. I have a feeling that um, 
I, and I don't know anything about it still because I, I was out all day. I left L.A. It was so smug I couldn't breathe. Some kind of oil I split deal. An oil deal, an investment that I hadn't made that a business manager had made for me. I still haven't talked to my business manager. I don't know what the situation is. And I sure hope I didn't lose $300,000. <laughs> 300 grand is a lot of money. No That's a lot of bread to lose, but I mean, and I don't mean to be blase about it, uh, but it's, um, you know, you need enough money to to live and to eat and to... Yeah. That's a lot eat. of lunch boxes. It is a lot of lunch boxes. <laughs> a lot of plastic. Yeah. What about your private life? You know, you, the fans what are so it? hysterical that you really have to be protected from kind of the, the public. At uh, times, at In times. a real way. I feel real safe right now. <laughs> <laughs> I there's, a, there's a nice public here. Yeah. But what's your, what's your life like? I have a couple of real good friends. And uh, I never really had a steady lady because I never had time to devote to that kind of a relationship. I was working at one time 16 hours a day, like seven days a week, you know, going away on the road, working at night recording for me, for the show, working all day on the show. It, you know, it leaves very li little time to sit back and think, let alone think about somebody else, you know. So you lose perspective about yourself and your personal life. And I almost lost it a couple of times. I mean, I was ready for a straight jacket. Stretcher, you know. I mean, it got to that point a couple of times. But I, I feel like at this point, you know, that I'm... I'm free, and I want to live a little bit. I, I want to, you know, I want to get out and just um, wake up at 10 o'clock, wake up at 11 o'clock, wake up at 2 o'clock, whatever it feels like, and not have to feel like, well, I've got to do something. I mean, we're all programmed into working. I mean, here I am, the American man, and I'm 24 years old, and I'm going to get out, and I'm not working, I, you know. Whether I have enough money or not, that's not the point. The fact is I'm, I'm conditioned, and I think that we all are, and we have to get to work. And if someone looks at you and says, oh, you're unemployed, huh? Well, that's too bad. I'm real glad to be unemployed. So few people are really in control of their own destinies. I hope you really have a handle on it. I do. Very, there have been very few people that have been able to survive the kind of thing that I've that gone transition. through. Yeah, the transition. But I believe that if you're really talented and it's really there for you, like I think it was for John and Paul and George and Ringo and and all those folks, and I mean, I, I'm not paralleling myself with them other than they went through a similar experience as mine and, and Presley, and there have been a, a few, and I'd like to think that whether it's on the same level or in the same degree that they did it and they achieved it, I would like to think that there is um, a lot of room for me to, to grow and to, uh, to make records. If there isn't, I'll feel real good anyway, because I, I look back at the experience now of the... Um, uh, the success and everything is, is it's over on that phase of my career and I, I touched something that very few people touch and I, I reached a level that very people reach and I wish everyone could experience that kind of a high. Now I'm just really into um, satisfying myself creatively. Well, good luck doing it. Anyway. Thank you. And thanks for being on the show. Thank David you. Cassidy.